There are shops looking for good, solid employees. We all are. Yeah. But we keep buying automation because we can't find the employees. I don't know whose Camaro he's got, but it's not his. This place is awesome. So we have a fair amount of equipment. We try to invest as much in automation as we can where it makes sense for as small of a job shop as we are. Uh, we saw a rising demand in welding, and that's why just over a year ago we bought our first QR twelve one thousand. We have another one uh, that's set to be delivered in about a week. We so, have enough welding work that we've garnered from this that we, look we need a second one. Absolutely. So what what do you guys weld on with this machine? I mean, what does it do for you? I mean, is there a specific part? Okay. So we do a bunch of different parts. Now, the, the beauty of this machine is it's super easy to program. So. To teach the machine, you drag the torch over. Uh, you drag oh, it's a, it's a point system where you touch it. Right. Okay. So you drag it over, here's where my start, here's my stop, and then you tell it, here's the weld process I want you to use, test it, and make sure you're good with the weld. Awesome. So let's see okay. the welds. Everybody's, you always see the guys on the forums complaining about the robot welds. Right. So let's check it out. Let's see if it's any good. All right. These are just tacked up. So do they, okay, do your, do your men tack these up and then bring them over to be welded Correct. out? Okay. So are these welded out? Yes, these ones are all welded wow, out. Wow, holy cow. So, what is it pulse? <laughs> so this uses a process uh, developed by, so the power supply, the welding power supply is Fronius. Okay. And they've developed a process called cold metal transfer. So what it does is it advances the wire out, energizes it, and then retracts the wire, and it leaves basically a little droplet, and it just it fuses. <laughs> Der Lichtbogen bleibt stabil und die Abschmelzleistung ist um bis zu 60 Prozent höher. So it's like me it's, doing this with the gun. It's like you doing that with the gun. And Absolutely it's consistent. Beautiful. I get the same process every time. I get the okay. same weld every time. And, and, you, and clearly, yeah, I mean, it's it's consistent. This consistency is unreal. Yeah. You know, I couldn't, I mean, I'm, I'm damn good and I can make it look like that, but consistently over and over again. To do that eight hours a day? No way. That, uh, no you're way. You're hurting by the end of the day. Yeah. So I've had um, these parts that go to our, uh, one of our local powder coders. I've had business come in from that because they saw how consistent the welding was, how every part looked identical, part to part to part to part. We, we've generated business from that. Now, this just with any other robotic welding, fixturing is key. So part consistency. So this looks pretty simple set up here to weld this. They just clamp this in here, tighten it down, and that's it. So about as simple a fixture as you can get, but our part consistency from our laser cutting process, so we have a fixed width every time. So you, you guys have a laser too? Yeah. So wow. That's the other building just on the other side here. So um, kilowatts, right? That's what those are Four measured kilowatts. in? So our Four? Measures, okay. Actually, uh, it's 2012, so we're 12 years old. Okay. So we're a four kilowatt CO2, which still does 90% of everything that we needed to do. And CO2, is that the atmosphere or is it like a like a MIG where it's shielded? So see, what, what I mean when I say CO2 laser, the laser is actually generated from um, excited gas. Really? Right, so there's a, what they call the, um, they used to call it the turbine, but basically it's where it mixes all the gas and the laser. And then they apply high frequency electricity to that and then emits photons. Wow. And the photons are then picked up and then it goes through a series of mirrors to bounce it around to get the beam out to where it the goes. cutting surface work. And then you can see that, that the cleanliness of that cut and the precision. Yes. We did, now, with, with all of this, I mean, I'm sure there's a learning curve and it takes some time Absolutely. to... Absolutely. key, getting your parts in there, in the, in the robot, in the same place every time with minor, um, minor variability. Some other parts you should see that we've okay. the whole time. Okay, what do those do? So this is a company product for a company out of uh, Boise, Idaho. Uh, the name of their company is Chains for Track. So these are snow chains for track vehicles like your skid Oh, steer. really? So they developed this. Um, this wow, that's first, awesome. Large year selling and they moved a whole bunch. Holy crap. But again, you can see the consistency. that welding process, the consistency in there. It, dude, it, we kill the time. So that machine outputs probably about what I can get three welders to put out in a day. Holy shit. So I have one guy feeding that and tacking parts in between. He outputs what three welders will take to put out. Now, what's the power expense, though? Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you. Does it outweigh what it costs to have a, a, a welder, you know, a skilled guy? So... If I can keep this thing busy eight hours a day, now it's, there, there's a good three to six month learning curve. You have time to, you have to take time to learn how to develop your fixtures so that you get that fixturing correct, 
Um, you need to make your fixtures easy to use so you get parts in and out quickly because your downtime when you're not welding, that's where it really costs you money. Yeah. So you're, you're trying to keep that uptime welding as much as possible. So have one operator that will run the machine and while he's out tacking machine, tacking parts together, the robot's welding. So as soon as he's done tacking parts, swap parts on the robot and keep it going. So like one of these fellows here will go ahead and fit and then the machine does the yep. welding. That's awesome. Yeah, sometimes we have two guys fitting stuff up depending on how quickly things are running. Um, the other nice thing about that is it has, the welder itself has an A and B station. Okay. So you know the divider in the middle. That divider yeah. will actually retract up so you can use the entire table and the large assembly. Oh. Or you can set up a B station. So while it's welding four parts over here in the A station, you're pulling out the four parts in the B station, putting four new parts in, close the door, and as soon as it's done welding, it shifts the welder over. It starts That's, welding the B side, so you can start pulling it out, and you can get close to 100% uptime on the machine. That's dope. And then you have, a, it looks like, an automatic finger brake here. So uh, this old Amato is actually our oldest brake, and that one we're uh, looking to sell. Like, really? This is like 1982 press brake. Yeah, I've never used, yeah, I've never even used our, a finger brake press brake. brake. So this has this a standard your standard three axis back gauge. Okay, so now let me ask you something. As a guy probably is not gonna see this level of business, I'm not really interested in the Yeah, but do they cut you a deal for the number of machines? I mean, because I can imagine that's a pretty penny, that's a pretty penny. Do they like try to work with you? Do they send yeah, a guy out to help you get it done? So they send out guys to install it and whatnot. So our responsibility uh, for so like for a machine like this for a large press break. Our responsibility coming from Trump was uh, they arranged freight here. We had to arrange a crane to offload it. Woo. We had to get it into the building and get power hooked up. How the hell did you get it in the building? I don't see you over there. We came in through that door. We actually rolled it on equipment skates. Nice. So okay. We got one end in through the door while the crane held the other end, and as we slowly slid it down equipment skates and set it down. That's a that. So we what's the capacity the of that machine? So that is uh, 350 U.S. tons press force. So uh, inch. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's that, that's American measurement. Uh, 350 tons. Um, I can bend 10 feet a half inch on that. With Damn. That carbon steel. Yeah, wow. That's I can do a full 10 foot half inch. Surprisingly, the expensive part isn't necessarily usually the press brake itself. It's all the tooling. Yeah. It's all the tooling. So where we where we're a job shop, our requirement for tooling gets bigger than most other shops that are just producing their own stuff. Well, this is an incredible job shop. Because it's, it's simple to redesign your product of, well, I've got this tooling to bend it with, so let's just redesign it for that. When I have customers like from the INL, Idaho National Laboratories, which is a Department of Energy site, um, I have to build what they put on paper. I understand. And I have to meet their spec, so we have a wide range of tooling for all of our press breaks. So now, do you make your own tooling with your Honestly, with your three access? Uh, surprisingly, we actually use a little bit different process. We okay. Make our own tooling depending on need. So sometimes it will be uh, out of that break, and other times it'll be this lamination process. Oh, okay. Okay. So this one actually sits in one of these larger dies over here. And then we press a piece in there and get that radius out of it. So you just cut that out with the laser and then bolt it together. We, yeah, we laser all that out. That's smart. Sometimes we have to swap out our laser slats from steel slats to stainless steel. Really? Just to avoid that contact contamination from steel going to stainless steel. For those and, nuclear required uh, jobs, you cannot have, they require no contamination. Okay, okay. So we have that where we can swap that out so that we don't get that contamination. That's very interesting. Yeah, you guys are in a realm that I, um, I don't hope to see. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are days I wish I had never seen it. Do you I want mean, to take a step out and get some video of the laser. Yeah, hell yeah! So this is the next shop over, and this is—is is this just for the laser, or are there other? You have other equipment too. Uh, laser and shear. Okay. So this is basically where all of our stuff gets started. Wow! Oh my god! Okay, so this so, is kind of where your your stock room, right, some equipment. So raw material comes in through here. And then we have automation on the laser so that we can load and unload if we need to run parts overnight. Is that just big like a big suction cup? Big suction cup frame. It'll pick up a big flat sheet, go over and set it on the cut table. And then the fork frame on the other side goes down and picks up all the cut parts and offloads it onto the top there. That's pretty so cool. So it'll just keep feeding itself until it runs out of material. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's the capacity of this machine? As far as... Uh, cut, lift. Thickness, yeah. Uh, we can do up to one inch mild steel, uh, half inch stainless and half inch aluminum. Wow. What, so what about the lifting capacity? Uh, it will lift a 5x10 uh, one-inch thick sheet of steel. Holy it's ready crap. To that. And that's about its max. And that that's the max table size too? Yeah. Max. So we're 5x10 is our dimensional size. 
and then one inch is our max cutting capacity. That's really awesome. That's really cool. I mean, it's technically rated for seven eighths, but you can push it. So this is your drop? Yeah. This okay. is all pile of drop. So when you're at your guys' level of, of business, do you worry about like, hey, maybe we could get one piece out of this? Or is it just like, hey, just take to the scrap yard and get it gone? So we look at it from the standpoint of what does it take for us? How much time does it take for us to manage that piece of material? And how so do you calculate it that? It's kind of an off the cuff feel and years ago we spent and did some calculations of how much time does it take for that guy to pick that blank off and go stack it in the stack and then okay i've got that blank still or even if we have it in inventory pull it out and put it back on there what was that cost to store it and then pull it from storage yeah and then was it worth the cost of the raw material if it takes a guy an hour and you're paying a dude 30 Three. bucks an hour yeah yeah, and then uh, just one more question for you. Uh, uh, clearly, you have to have some guys who have some common sense in here. Absolutely, you're gonna have some. You're gonna have some guys who know how to work tools in the yes, shop. Yes, have to. What is what is a shop at your level pay a guy who walks in here and can pretty much weld any process, do anything, and is a quick learner? Um, a guy like that is invaluable. Yeah, I mean that's that, that's kind of that rare unicorn of an employee. I, I have yet to meet him. I would probably pay him about what he was asking as long as we could afford it. Yeah, as long as it wasn't over. So, guys, yeah, I as mean. As long as it wasn't ridiculous, if you've got the skills out there, come see there are job. shops looking. There are shops looking for good, solid employees. We all are. Yeah. But we keep buying automation because we can't find the employees. I don't think there's anything top secret in here. So, so this is Rob's shop. Check this out. And, and Rob, how did you. So, this isn't a pain. If you look closely, <laughs> how did you make that, Rob? So, well, I, I didn't make it. Okay. Uh, my CAD guy came up with the process to convert a photo basically into uh, CAD geometry. That's awesome. He was able to produce a DXF and convert all the CAD into all the shading into circles. So it's based on an old printing process called dithering, I think, or half toning. Half toning. Half toning. Okay. So the half tone process uh, is an old newspaper printing process. So they print a dot on the paper of varying size, and that's how they. It produces the shadows and the shading, and it gives the picture depth in those varying circle sizes. The crazy thing is, the farther you move away, the more your eye blends all that together, and the holes start to disappear. Get the light, too. Oh, wow. Oh, it looks even cooler when you turn the light out. Uh -huh. Yeah, it looks like a solid picture from back here, and then as I zoom in, you know, you can get right in and see the dots. That's really a cool piece. So do you guys, like, let's say Joe Blow wanted something like that. Would you guys do something like that oh, for absolutely. Joe Blow? Because you, you, now when you say a job shop, you mean you'll take most of whatever walks in the we, door. We take people who walk into the door and we try and find them the best deal. Whether Because if we're not it, we'll try and recommend the place to go of, here's the guys who are really going to help you out. Hell yeah, that's what I try to do too. So, I mean, we're, we're a job shop, but we've been pushing ourselves more towards that uh, repeat production work. Very cool, very cool. An awesome office, man. I didn't, I didn't catch that because when I first walked in, but that is in, that's an absolutely incredible piece. And who is the model again? I didn't catch that on Charlize camera. Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. And you said uh, the Italian job. The Italian job. She started Monster. Um, a ton of different movies. There's a whole bunch of movies. <laughs> Eon Flux. Okay. Um, Mad Max, Fury Road. You want to get through this? Let's go! Okay. She played Furiosa, which they're now doing a spin-off movie on. Very cool. All right, so Paul just explained to me, it's one of Rob's guys here, he's uh, one of the family members, I guess, that they can actually laser cut tubes. So you have, what, do, what did you call that? Rotolaws. So that's the Trump term for uh, laser cutting on a flatbed laser. So we have the rotary attachment. This is actually a little smaller than what it's able to clamp. And we were actually able to 3D print um, a piece that allow us to fixture that in and then laser cut and process that on the side. That's awesome. I hope to see you guys at uh, Fabtech one of these days. You betcha. That's awesome. People drive wild around here, man. <laughs> I don't know whose Camaro he's got, but it's not his. I'm checking out these awesome waterfalls here in Idaho Falls. It's been a great day, and I'm about to have some uh, brew and grill. So, hey, right? How, how could it get any better? How could it get any better? Really, honestly. All right, guys, like what you saw here today, like, subscribe, share. If you didn't like it, remember to go fuck yourself.